All right, folks, here it is. Donald Trump victory speech following a dominant performance in the Iowa caucus. Let's take a listen. Well, I want to thank everybody. This has been some period of time. And most importantly, we want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. What a turnout. What a crowd. And I really think this is time now for everybody, our country, to come together. We want to come together. 100%. Uh, whether it's Republican or Democrat or liberal or conservative, it would be so nice if we could come together and straighten out the world and straighten out the problems and straighten out all of the death and destruction that we're witnessing. That's practically never been like this. It's uh, just so important. And I want to make that a very big part of our message. We're going to come together. It's going to happen soon, too. It's going to happen soon. I want to thank uh, some of the great people. We have so many senators. If I go through every name, we'll be here all night, and everybody's going to get angry at me. But the senators, the congressmen from Washington, they came down from all different states. I want to thank you very much. I want to congratulate Ron and Nikki for having a, a, good, a good time together. We're all having a good time together. <laughs> And uh, I think they both actually did very well. I really do. I think they both did very well. We don't even know what the outcome of second place is. And uh, I see Carrie Lake. Congratulations, Carrie. Very good. I spotted Thank her you, after you announced here. because she's terrific. She's going to be a senator, a great senator, I predict, right? You're going to be a great senator. And uh, I also want to congratulate Vivek because he did a hell of a job. He came from uh, zero, and he's uh, got a big percent, probably 8 percent, almost 8 percent, and that's a, an amazing job. They all did. They're all very smart, very smart people, very capable people. I think most importantly, I want to thank my incredible wife, uh, First Lady, I'll say former and maybe future. But more important than Melania, I want to thank her incredible, beautiful mother who passed away a few days ago. And she's up there, way up there. She's looking down, and she's so proud of us. And I just want to say to Amalia, you are special, one of the most special people I've ever known. And uh, that was a tough period of time for the family. But she, uh, she's amazing. She was amazing. So I just want to thank what she's done for our family and her husband, who's home right now and very lonely. He's a lonely man, but he's going to be okay. Victor, they're great people, great, uh, great parents to all of us, really. Great parents, but also to Baron. Boy, did she take care of Baron. That's how he got so tall. He only ate her food. <laughs> and I want to thank my family generally. Uh, they've worked so hard. And they've taken so much abuse for being good people. I mean, good people. But uh, Eric and Don, <laughs> they really did. These two have been working so hard. And they, uh, you know, they have another job also. So they have to do it all. But they, uh, they've been working so hard. And I know that Ivanka is home and Tiffany's home. They're watching. And I know that Barron's watching. Good old Barron. He's. I said, you're going to be a basketball player. I said, well, I like soccer, Dad, actually. I said, at your height, I like basketball better, but you can't, sometimes you can't talk them into everything. But he's a special boy. But the whole family is just incredible. And my uh, sister, Elizabeth, who's uh, just the biggest fan, she's just an incredible person and uh, always supportive. We love Elizabeth so much. Uh, also, uh, we have a woman who took a big chance. You know, in most states, we have support of everybody, the Congress, the senators. We had Marco Rubio. We had Rick Scott the other day. Uh, we have, you know, probably 50, 55 percent of the senators. And now they're all calling and saying, we want to endorse you, sir. I said, oh, great. <laughs> Same thing with the Congress, men and women. We have tremendous, much more than anybody probably has ever had in this position. And we love them all. They're great. They're really trying to do a good job for our country. But one woman in Iowa who really stepped up was your Attorney General, Brenna Byrd. She really, really stepped up. Where is Brenna? Come here.
She stepped up. She's going to be your governor someday, I predict. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll be watching, but she really did. She broke away from the pack. And she had tremendous courage and uh, wasn't easy. In some states, it's easy. In other states, it's a little bit more difficult. But we have really the support of the people of Iowa, which has been just incredible. Another man who was actually the first person to endorse me in the entire country. He's a state senator. His name is Brad Zahn. He looks like he's the most handsome guy, I think. Oh, you made it. He had to drive from his caucus location. You made it. I call him the Marlboro Man. Hey, Brad. Say something? Come on. Go up. Say something. Look at that guy. What a well, I'll tell you, I had to actually do a TV interview bragging about you. The reason why I was late is because of that. But um, is he awesome or what? I am honored to be the first person in the United States to endorse this guy. The next president, the 47th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And when he says endorse, we're really talking about 2015. He endorsed me before, actually, long before I knew I was going to run. I said, who's this man in Iowa? He's a senator, a state senator. He's a good-looking guy, too. Doesn't he look? You could pay him and give him a lot of money. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for being here. You are so great. Comes all the way from Missouri, which isn't that far. You can't, you can't drive an electric car that far, though. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. The, uh, the group of people that we have on the stage is uh, just emblematic of the tremendous group that we've had. We've had such a, a great team. Uh, you know, we did well. We were looking really good in 2016. And uh, just to go back to uh, the senator, he was saying, I said, who is that guy, Brad, his name? Who is he? He keeps endorsing me. He keeps saying Trump. And I didn't even know I was running. He endorsed me four months before I knew I was running, about four months before the Escalade ride down with our great first lady. And that was Brad. I said, who is he? So he was the first one. But we have people that are so incredible. Your Republican Party chairman, Bobby Kaufman, and his son, who is a brilliant guy, and he worked with us. And I will tell you, uh, that is a family of real professionals. Matt Whitaker, who is the very talented and very good attorney general. Where is Matt? He's around here someplace. And he's been with us all the way. You know, we have a man that was very impressive. And I say, there's nothing wrong with it. He's so solid and so good that he didn't catch on. Sometimes being a little controversial is good. He's so perfect. Although he did break his leg during the campaign, that wasn't so good. But it sort of stood out a little bit, Doug. But Doug Burgum from North Dakota, the yes. governor, Our and guy. his beautiful wife, Doug, Catherine. Doug, Doug, Doug. And he got out of the race. What people don't know is that he actually supported me on the other side twice already, right? Then he decided to do it. And he was outstanding. But uh, the traction is never easy, right? You need controversy for traction sometimes. And this guy is the most solid guy. There's no controversy whatsoever. And he's one of the best governors in our country. And I hope that I'm going to be able to His call on him uh, to be a piece of the administration, a very important piece of the administration. And also, just to, to conclude with this, the entire Trump team, and that includes my two boys who are really here all the time, whenever we needed them. Whenever we needed them, they are great. Eric and Don, and look at all these people. Oh, Susie, I have to say, and Chris, Chris. And they want no accolades. They just want a victory, and they want to make America great again. That's all they want, actually. They don't want to be speaking. They don't want to have pictures. They just want to do their job, right? I want to thank you very much, Jason, everybody. You're really fantastic. What a job you've done. Thank you. So we're going to come together. We're going to drill baby drill right away. Yeah. Drill baby drill. We're going to seal up the border. Yeah. 
because right now we have an invasion. We have an invasion yeah. of millions and millions of people that are coming into our country. I can't imagine why they think that's a good thing. It's a very bad thing. I think it's a group of people that are probably larger in number than New York State. And we can't have that. We can't have that. It's not sustainable as a country. It's horrible. And you know, they're coming from prisons and jails. They're coming from all over. They're coming from countries that most people have never heard of. And they're coming from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're being emptied out into our country. And they're terrorists. Many terrorists are coming in. You know, in 2019, I saw just recently on a poll, they had none in 29, no terrorists. Not, now, I even say there's got to be some, but they have none. And then as soon as this group took over, they have hundreds and hundreds of terrorists coming in, known terrorists, some of them really bad. And many of them are in, and they came in, and nobody knows where they are. This is not a good thing. And we're going to have to deport. We're going to have to have a deportation level that we haven't seen in this country for a long time, since Dwight Eisenhower, actually. So I don't want to be overly uh, rough on the president. But I have to say that he is the worst president that we've had in the history of our country. He's destroying our country. And, you know, my wife attended the funeral two months ago of Rosalind Carter, and it was beautiful. And Jimmy Carter was there, and I thought to myself, Jimmy Carter is happy now because he will go down as being a brilliant president by comparison to Joe Biden. He'll be a brilliant president. It's going to be, he's going to be known as brilliant by comparison. So we have to stop the invasion. We have to bring down our energy. We have to say, you know, we have, I say all the time, we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation anywhere in the world. And we have to stop the crime, and we have to help rebuild our cities, and we have to rebuild the capital, Washington, D.C. I was there on one of the Biden indictment trials. You know, I got it. this is the only person this never happened before. But I go to a lot of courthouses because of Biden, because they're using that for election interference. And it's on things like election. And I don't know if you know, but they did polls tonight on the election of 2020. Do you believe it was... Honest or not, 82% said, 82% said it was not. And we can't have that, Chairman. We can't have that. You can't have a situation like that. So uh, we're going to straighten out our elections. We're going to do a lot of great things. We're going to try and go to paper ballots as soon as possible. Voter ID. One day, one day. Elections. You know, we have these elections that last for 62 days, and if you need some more time, take as much time as you want, and so many bad things happen. We have to get rid of mail-in ballots, because once you have mail-in ballots, you have crooked elections. Actually, Jimmy Carter's commission said that a long time ago. We're going to rescue our economy. We're going to save our economy. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. There was never a greater economy, and now we don't. And when you look at what's happened with inflation, inflation is destroying. You know, they call it a country killer. Going back hundreds of years, Germany, countries that had big inflation are dead. They become dead countries. We have to stop that immediately. And we want peace through strength. Russia would have never attacked Ukraine, would have never done it. Putin and I get along fine. We get along very well. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. The Fake news, which I would, if the fake news would become real and honest news, 90% of our problems in this country would be solved. They would be solved. So, Russia would have never attacked. Israel would have never been attacked. The Ukraine situation is so horrible. The Israeli situation is so horrible. What's happened? And, uh, we're going to get them solved. We're going to get them solved very fast. I actually said Ukraine. I know President Putin very well. I know Zelensky very well. I'm going to get them in. We're going to get it solved very quickly. Should have never happened. Would have never happened. Now you have all that death, far greater than people understand. The numbers are far, far greater than anybody would even think possible. You're going to find that out in the years to come. 
when they knock down these massive buildings in Ukraine and then you see uh, they announced two people were slightly wounded. No, no, many people were killed. Many people were killed. We're going to get it stopped. But it's so sad because it should have never started. People killed and a culture destroyed. You can never replace thousand-year-old buildings with the most beautiful golden domes and churches and everything, just all rubble now. And it's so sad. Would have never, ever happened. And likewise, uh, Israel would have never been attacked. It all comes from Iran, and we would have had a deal with Iran very quickly, had the election where we, by the way, got, and I say we because it's all we, we got more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country. But we, they say we lost by a whisker, okay? But regardless, regardless of that, we're going to uh, do incredible things, and uh, we're not going to let China do what they'd like to do. I get along great with him also. President Xi is a very strong leader. And we're going to get things solved. We're going to get the Ukraine war solved. We're going to get the Israeli situation solved. But if you think back to that, Iran was broke. I said to every country, anybody does business with Iran, buys oil from Iran, they were broke. We're not going to let you do business in the United States. And that's the way it is. They did very little business, almost sold no oil. Nobody wanted to do that. That's a big penalty. And what happened is they had no money to give to Hamas and to give to Hezbollah. And an in point. fact, there were a lot of stories at the time. They had no money for terror. And for four years, we had no terror. We had the terror ban. We had the terror ban. They called the Trump travel ban, but it was really the Trump terror ban. We had no, we don't want people in our country that are going to blow up our shopping centers. Thank you very much. And we want a country of law and order. So we're going to rebuild the capital of our country, Washington, D.C. We're going to scrub those beautiful marble columns and get the swastikas off them. And we're going to scrub them and get the graffiti off them. And we're going to clean the streets and we're going to rebuild really? the streets. Thanks. And we're not going to have rusted medians through the middle that are falling down into the roads where foreign dignitaries from all over the world come and they look. And we're not going to be riding on top of garbage like I did just a month ago, riding on top of garbage. We're going to rebuild our beautiful Washington, D.C., and we're going to take control of it, and we're going to make unbelievably harsh penalties for people that go around shooting. Last week, they shot three people. And every night, something happens. It's, uh, it's so sad. And likewise, we're going to rebuild our cities, and we'll work with the Democrats to do it. I'd be glad to work with the people in New York. We're going to work with the people in Chicago and L.A. We're going to rebuild our cities, and we're going to make them safe. And we're going to give our police officers immunity. So every time they, they do something, they don't get sued and stopped. We're going to end crime in our cities. In Iowa, you don't know what that means, but I'll tell you, this is a different place. You don't know about crime. You don't know about getting mugged and getting whacked and getting thrown into subways. And we're going to stop it. And we're going to come down very hard on criminals. And we're going to stop crime in America. Sorry to pause really quickly, guys. we got to give you a live update. The Fox News Decision Desk is now projecting that Ron DeSantis will secure second place in Iowa. So we were talking about that for a second. We were saying the last hour or so, it seems like that's what's going to happen. Uh, yes, Ron DeSantis, officially per the Fox News Decision Desk, will secure second place in Iowa. All right, back to the speech. So I want to just finish by saying that uh, this has been an incredible experience. The people have been, this is the third time we've won. But this is the biggest win. This is a, they said, well, if you win by 12%, that's a big win. That's going to be very hard to do. Well, I think we've more than doubled that, I guess, and tripled it, maybe. They said, you'll never get over 50. And I just left and we were at 54. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with it. But they said, you can't do that, sir. I said, what's about the highest? Well, you could get into the 40s, maybe 40, 41. And then I look up and, you know, it's very interesting. I didn't know they called it early. I, I thought that they called it at about 10 o'clock. My impression, see this gentleman? We built, he's dressed like a wall. I love this guy. He goes to, he's been at 150 rallies probably, right? 
He has the most beautiful outfit I've ever seen. It's all beautiful brick. Will you come up here? Just come up here. Come on. It's so the nice to see that. Our guy. That's the man right I there. I still don't know his name. Come like, on up here. He's yeah, emblematic of what we did. Guy. We built over 500 miles of wall. We were going to add another 200 miles. It's much more than we promised. And we had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the worst border in the history of the world. Look at this man. Congratulations. Yes. 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 Really nice. Nice to see you, man. You take care of yourself, okay? Absolutely will. Thank take you. Care. I love that outfit. I love him. That's great. And him the southern border. We love it. That's a hot selling jacket, by the way. So. But that represents what we did. No, we built a tremendous. That's the reason. And we got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free. And we had remain in Mexico, and we had catch and release in Mexico. And we did a job. We had the safest border in our history. We had the greatest economy in our history. We had a great, we were a great nation three years ago, and now we're a, a nation in decline. We are going to turn it around so fast. It's going to happen so fast. We're going to drill. We're going to make great, we have great wealth. We're going to drill. We're going to use that money to lower your taxes even further. We gave you the biggest tax cut in history. <laughs> And we're going to lower them further, and we're also going to pay off national debt. It's about time. Yeah. Oh, well, it's said about that. time. So it's now off to New Hampshire, a great place. We won it last time, and uh, we won it both times. And uh, we love it. The people are great. But you know, the truth is, the people in our country are great. They're all great. It's, uh, we love Iowa, but they're all great. They only want to see one thing. They want our country to come back. They're embarrassed by what's going on. Our country is laughed at. All over the world, they're laughing at us. And they want our country to come back. They want America. You know, they want us to be great again. It's a very simple MAGA, make America great again. And America first. America first is a very important part of MAGA. So we're going to put America first. We're going to make America great again. Again, Iowa, we love you. You are going to, oh, you just go out and buy larger tractors and more land. Don't worry about it. And uh, to all of the people standing behind me and all of the people in this room and so many great politicians and great dignitaries and friends, I just want to thank you all. This is a very special night. And this is the first because the big night is going to be in November when we take back our country and truly we do make our country great again. Thank you very much, everybody. Great honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, you just heard Donald Trump's victory speech after winning the Iowa caucus. And if you are just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, we will go really quickly to the live margins. Currently, with 94% of the vote in, Donald Trump leads 50, has 51% of the vote in the state of Iowa. This race was never close. It was actually called by the New York Times at 8.32 p.m. And Donald Trump, obviously the winner big time of the Iowa caucus. We also have Ron DeSantis coming in second. Um, on that speech itself, I mean, let's talk about it really quickly. He basically said what I kind of thought he should go out there and say, which is, look, the primary is over, okay? Donald Trump dominating the Iowa caucus by that much basically proves it. I thought, and I said this, basically declare it over and, dec and put all the focus on Biden. Like, not even go after the other candidates. And that's what he did, right? Most of the speech is about how, what we're going to do in November, how we're going to, uh, you know, fix the country in terms of Bi and what Biden's done wrong with the country and all that different type of stuff, right? And you noticed even to the other GOP candidates, he didn't aggressively go after them. He actually just basically congratulated them, said you guys did good, you know, big unifying message there. And then you also have that one comment about how, you know, I love the people in Iowa, New Hampshire, but I also love the people in this country, right? The people in this country are great. In my opinion, that's probably one of the most unifying Donald Trump speeches I think he's actually ever given. 
like big picture all you know through all the years of his presidency his candidacy and i think it's good timing it's the right move you know it's kind of disarming in the way in a way everyone knows aggressive trump i don't think enough of the country knows the i'm not even say softer side of trump but you know the unifying side of trump and i think that was actually a very perfect message in my opinion yeah, no, I think it was a great message because, you know, one of the big hits on Trump, especially from people that are siding with Haley and DeSantis on this, uh, in this primary, are he's, a, he's not unifying. He's not going to bring the country together. He can't get all of us on the same page. And that was a great unifying speech. And very, I think very he's, good. he's yeah. playing into that vote a little bit. Right. He's wanting people to be like, hey. Because I, I think he's also trying to say maybe subtly to the Haley voters, to the DeSantis yeah. voters, to the Vivek voters. I'm more mature. Time than to come I home. Am. Right. Yeah, come yeah, time home, to come home. Right. Come home. All the, the shots you have on, on me that, uh, you know, I'm not mature, I'm a loose cannon, all this stuff. He's, you know, he's showing that he's not. He's showing that he can be the adult in the room. He can be the, the bigger man and congratulate the other candidates instead of going after him. Yeah. And I think it was great. And also, like you mentioned, saying I love the people in Iowa, I love all these people, but I also love the people all across America. The people in California, the people in Oregon, the people in New York, the people in Maine. Mm -hmm. in liberal blue states that are still going to vote for him or may not vote for him. He's talked about liberals and conservatives. Yeah. Great unifying message. I think that's a great step in the right direction for him. Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, uh, you do want to see some reconciliations after the primary. Probably Trump Vivek for sure. Trump DeSantis maybe. I really hope he doesn't reconcile with Nikki Haley, to tell you the truth. Yeah. But I don't think it's an effective use of resources at this point when you saw what happened tonight. For Donald Trump to even waste time campaigning against the other Republicans at this point, it's an yeah. irrelevant conversation. Why? So you notice he kind of extended the olive branch to them, yes. and that was the right move. Why waste time, and also why <clears throat> waste time trying to tear down a candidate? Why divide the party further? Why, yeah, why divide? All you got to do is unite at this point. In yeah. a state like Iowa, that Trump's already very well off in, you get twenty-one percent of the people in that state that said they want Ron DeSantis as president. You get nineteen percent mm -hmm. that want Nikki Haley. Why further divide that party, that wing of the party? Yeah that may go out and still undecided in the general or in future elections. Why trash them? Why trash the 21% for DeSantis, the 7% for Vivek, whoever it may be? Why go out and trash them? Yep. You know, unify the party, bring it together, have all the voters come home so we can have a big, big victory in November. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, folks, well, that's the Donald Trump speech. We will move on now and keep covering, I mean, we're close to 100%. We might as well go there, and I do want to hear the uh, DeSantis speech and Haley speech and Vivek speech if those are happening. So we will start shifting to trying to monitor those. But thank you to everyone who's tuned in so far. Be sure to uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're just randomly finding this in the algorithm. And of course, feel free to super chat with your thoughts on the speech on the night. And yeah. All right. There's Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen.